You guys know that when I get into a project, I get into a project. I find a species I love and I hone in on it and I want to figure everything out about that animal. I want to understand them. I want to be able to breed them. And then I want five pairs of it. Well, black breasted leaf turtles aren't an exception to this. Also, sorry. Uh, Hazel's getting a little rambunctious there because I just fed him a bit and he's also saying, Dion, Dion, I can't wait to go into my new home. I can't wait to put you in it. You're gonna love it, buddy. Alas, I digress as usual. That should be my middle name. Dion Digression Ceylonian, does that work? I'm doing it again. Listen, I'm always on the hunt for more leaf turtles. But finally, I think I've gotten to a number that I'm okay with. You see, finding these animals in Canada, let alone anywhere else in the world, is very challenging. They're actually endangered, which is very unfortunate. The primary cause of that is due to habitat loss in their native environment in Vietnam, coupled with the fact that they're so hard to breed. Canada has some crazy turtle laws too about importing and exporting, which means that whatever we have here is pretty much all we got. They're hard animals to have. So with the leaf turtles, I usually put ads out looking for animals. As you may or may not know, I have 2.3 leaf turtles, two males and three females. I really wanted to just kind of make that a whole number. I wanted to have three unique pairs producing animals. So for the last better part of a year, I've had this wanted ad up on a classifieds page called Kijiji. If you're American, that's basically the Canadian version of Craigslist. Lucky for me, that's kind of worked out a few times. I've had random people reach out to me being like, I have two leaf turtles and I don't want them anymore. I'm like, thank you, here's the money. Yeah, 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 awesome, awesome. Awesome, and I've, that's how I've gotten the majority of my lead turtles, but finally we found a male. So in today's video, we're gonna set up an enclosure, pick him up, and then I'm gonna do an update on my animals, show you what's been going on with the other five, and yeah, it should be good. Because as you may or may not know, fall is around the corner and the leaf turtles will be going into brumation soon. So we're gonna be saying goodbye to them again. It's not clickbait, they literally go away and sleep for three, four months and you don't see them in my content for that time. We did get some eggs and we'll talk more about that soon. If you follow me on Instagram, you'd know. I'm not sure about what's going on with those. It's all a step in the right direction, but we'll get to it. So. My name is Dion, I make videos about specialty pets, such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and dinging that little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my future uploads. I do my best to post one to two videos a week, and sometimes I post some of those uh, YouTube shorts too, if you like those. All right, let's get into it. Let's set up our enclosure for a new black-breasted leaf turtle. Go pick them up and start with our update. All right guys, so we have all the substrate in the bin here for the new leaf turtle. Um, there's some Porcelinoides prenosis that are coincidentally just in that substrate. So I'm going to try and be a bit gentle when we're stirring things around. But the next thing, there's another one. The next thing we have to do here is add some water. Now there's no drainage layer in this enclosure because with these guys, it's just open top and I'm constantly spraying them anyways. So I'm not really concerned about the substrate getting oversaturated with water. Uh, we want it to be quite moist and wet anyways. So let's go ahead now, stir this up because it is actually quite dry. As you can see, the mix is just a whole bunch of things. We have some cypress mulch, there's some activated charcoal in there too from a filter media box. We have peat moss, um, different types of reptile bark, like orchid chip, and uh, yeah, there's some leaf litter and, and, and uh, dried sphagnum moss in there too. A lot of good things to help hold moisture for an animal that definitely requires that. I think that's evenly moist. And again, don't fret, those isopods are gonna show up there already. <laughs> Whoo, I was worried, I didn't wanna smoke them. So, now that this is all set up, everything else is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna leave some of this bark around because it just looks nice. Uh, we're going to add a few plants, not many, just a little bit to help create cover, sense of security. Okay, so I've got these pieces of cork bark uh, that one probably would already work well. Let's just see if we can prop it up a bit. Mm, I think I'm gonna add something like that. That should do it. Add some substrate here and also here, just to kind of stabilize this situation. Dig this out a bit. So if he wants to, he can go in here. 
That's kind of a cool hideout. That really goes far. He's got options. All right, so for plants, a lovely fern here. I believe this is a bird's nest fern. It's an in Indonesian species. It's somewhere around the side here. I don't want to take too much of the foreground up. We're going to have our water dish there. I want to be able to get some good shots of the animal. Um, feeding and stuff too, so I'd like some open area. But this should suffice. It's kind of giving the turtle a bit of greenery. Now the UVB light will cross over the top here, so it'll provide the plant with some light as well. I think we're good like this. The burn is nicely secured and planted in to the bin. And we can proceed by adding our water dish. The water dish is just gonna go here, just like that. Now we'll fill it. We're gonna do it the fun way. I mean, since we're already doing that, we might as well mist our fern a bit. Ta-da! We have a perfect black-breasted leaf turtle environment set up for our new male we gotta pick up. So you guys will be seeing a lot more on this setup soon. Stay tuned. You're probably like, what? What is this? Uh, these are the new... This will be the new turtle. Well, let's slide them in now. Well, here. Let me get this in first. You'll see what I'm talking about shortly. So, perfect, three, three bins, three turtles. Um, I have to set this light up so it's gonna go over top like this. Um, I need to hook it to the bottom of the shelf so it doesn't sit on the bin. But the issue right now is that these bins become brittle and break under UVB exposure. So I'm just gonna show you straight up, like, see that? It just cracks and falls apart. And that's what the UVB rays do to it. Now, the reason why I don't mind breaking this to show you as a demonstration is because we're actually replacing these bins today as well. So little Autumn here. Hello, Autumn. You sweet little girl is getting a new home. So I got the same bins here. We're gonna replace them. We're just gonna take everything that's already in the enclosure and hopefully lift it out, assuming the roots take over all the substrate. It'd be really nice to just pick it up and drop it back in, but nothing ever works the way I hope it does. So I'm assuming the worst case scenario. But Yoda and Autumn's enclosures have this issue. So uh, we'll, we'll sort that out now. Look at all that plastic, it's wild. Okay, Autumn, so, old home is there, new home is here. How easily can we transfer you, madame? I'm going to quickly take Autumn here. Sorry, baby girl. And uh, we're just gonna gently place her in here for the time being. Safety first, of course. And now, let's see if we can Work some magic and actually transfer this as much as we can. That would be so nice. What happens if I gently pull this up? Oh yeah, okay, okay. Guys call me crazy, but I think we just might be able to pull this off or at least get a big portion of it. So, gently going to grab. Hey, it's working. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> Let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, friends, here, as you can see, we have the Reptiliatus substrate inserts. Uh, they're perfect. You just pull them out and throw them in a new enclosure when you're ready to rock. Good as new. That is awesome. I'm geeking out a little bit. Listen, everybody, it's the small victories, I'm telling you, okay? I know that that was probably a bit underwhelming for the majority of you, but that is a small victory I am willing to celebrate. Put this back. Honestly, I think what we had going for us was that the substrate was a bit dry. And if it was too wet, it probably would have just fallen apart. So let's give it a good soaking now. And funny enough, I have a bit of leaf litter here from the other bin. So I can actually save this for our new turtle. Okay, we'll put her water dish back in the enclosure. We're also going to 
top it off and again spray down the enclosure here. Again, substrate is kind of dry. Can add some reverse osmosis water to the soil and then top off the water dish. Beautiful. Now we can add Autumn back to her home. Hi, Autumn. Hi, beautiful. How are you? Your face is a little bit dirty. You good, girl? I love this animal. She is sassy, though. She will have nothing to do with those males. Maybe next year. She's smaller than the other girls, so she could just not be ready, but... Anyways, here, we'll put her in her water dish. She'll probably be happy to be in there. Knowing her, she'll start drinking right away. She always does. Okay, let's put her back on the rack. Okay, now it's time to remove Yoda here. As you saw, her bin is all messed up too. The whole front is falling apart. We gotta secure the animal and redo her home as well. Hopefully we can transfer the substrate just as easily as it was to do with Autumn. This thing is brittle. Like, really brittle. Lots of poo bell. Ay, ay, ay. Don't worry, Yoda. I got you, girl. Here is my beautiful little lady. Well, not little. She's my biggest female. My beautiful lady, Yoda. Hi. How are you, mademoiselle? She's like, what the heck is going on? Unhand me, sir. I love these turtles. They are so cool. Let's take her and place her in a bin. Like so, carefully, gently. Get her secure lid on, move her to a desk, and do the same thing with her enclosure. You're gonna take everything that's heavy out first. I suspect this one's not gonna come out as easily because the fern is way less uh, grown, right? So I don't know how far the roots go. Okay, we got that corner. Yeah, okay, that's okay. So we got this much, we'll go with that. That's totally fine. Place that in and then the rest is easy to just back into. There we go. Wonderful. Oh my gosh. I just dropped it and like four more pieces of plastic fell off. And add everything back. Our hide goes in like so. Our water dish can go in this corner here. Nestle it in like that. I don't push it in all the way because otherwise the isopods climb into it and drown, which is pretty sad. A good spray down too. And then we'll pour some water into the soil too to moisten everything a bit and top off the bin or the water dish, which is literally a takeout container. Got that idea from my buddy, Mike Taitula. He has a pair of leaf turtles and I thought it was genius. They're not too deep and they're not too shallow. Adding water to the substrate. To the water dish. Perfect. Come here, my beautiful tortellini. Hello. Okay, I love you too. We'll put her in. Yeah, there you go. That gives her a nice soak. Okay, all the bins are set up and replaced. Let's go get ourselves a brand new leaf turtle. All right, everybody, check out this guy. He looks phenomenal. This boy is a looker. Beautiful Geomita Spengler eye. What are you doing, eh? All right, so let's get him into the more mossy bin. He feels a bit more safe. And then we'll head home. All right, everybody, so we are now home with my new Geomida Spengleri Black Breasted Leaf Turtle. Look at this little guy. Hey buddy, you good? How you doing? Look at this guy. Look how cute this guy is. Holy camoly. All right, let's put him in. See how he handles that water dish because I actually want to make sure he can get in and out of it easy enough. There you go, buddy. What do you think? Can you get out of there okay? 
Come on, sir, you can climb right out. There we go. I figured maybe what we could do is see if he wants to eat some fruit. I would normally, you know, just let him settle in. But uh, we could see if he's hungry. Some raspberry, maybe. Hey, buddy. You want some raspberry? Does this look good to you? Oh! It does, doesn't it? Wow, okay. Someone's enthusiastic about the raspberry. Mmm. I'm impressed how much he likes that. Good job, little dude. Check it out, Jabba and Leela are basking under the UVB light. Oh, nocturnal reptiles don't use UVB. Shots fired, people. For today's question of the day, I'd like to ask you all, what should I name this animal? Look, I get it. I ask you guys for your opinions on what I should name my pets. And sometimes if I find another name myself that resonates more, I have to choose that. But this time, I'm confident you guys will beat me to a name that I like better than anything I could come up with. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think we should name this adorable new black-breasted leaf turtle. He's so charismatic. He has such a nice looking shell. Come on, guys. I believe in you. Drop them. And then if you go through that comment section yourself and you see a name you like, give it a like. Because that means we can do a voting process. And I'll be looking at the ones that have the highest votes too and they make their way up the comment section as they sort of rank with more thumbs ups. More thumbs ups, more likes. It's gonna be great. I'd like to hear from you. And if you have anything else you wanna share, more suggestions and ideas, of course, those are also welcome. So as always, I'll give your comment, or in this case, name, a heart, and we can engage in a little bit of a conversation. Thanks very much. So here's little foot. I'm gonna go ahead and offer him a cherry tomato and see what he does with that. Certainly, little dude is intrigued. What if we pinch it a bit? And make a little vulnerable spot on it. Oh, okay. There you go. What do you think about that, huh? So here's Mr. E.T. I'm going to give him a blueberry. Hey, buddy. How you doing down there? I want a blueberry. There you go. Mmm, yum, yum, yum. You like that? Is that tasty? There you go. Look at this guy through the plastic. He is uh, quite enthusiastic about the blueberry. Wow. Is that good, E.T.? Do you like that? Wow, I'm actually surprised he, uh, that's, to be honest, that's his first time having some blueberry. I don't know if he would want any, but he sure likes it. So here is Yoda again. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give her an earthworm, a nightcrawler earthworm. They're so hard to hold. Would you like an earthworm? I know you would. You love these. I'm shocked she's not already going nuts for it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Always has to eat in the corner. Where are you going? All right, well, I guess enjoy your meal in the corner. This turtle is still just running around everywhere with her worm. 
You're good. You can eat it wherever you want. Nobody's going to disturb you. Even Autumn over here is like, what is going on? Yoda, just chill. Oh, she even dropped it now. Now what are you going to do? I need some help getting that back. Here. These turtles really make me laugh. Autumn, would you like a worm? Here. There you go, girl. Well, she gets what she's doing. Pretty slippery, slimy meal, so sometimes it takes a while. Oh, don't lose it. Don't lose it. Looks like Yoda's just about done her worm. What about Petrie? Does Petrie want a worm? Petrie. It's all slimy. There we go. Hi, Petrie. Did you want an earthworm? Nightcrawler? Get it, get it, get it, get it. There you go, girl. Mm-mm, good. And of course, she's gonna waddle away with hers as well. Perfect. So guys, over spring, we were lucky enough to have a few successful pairings. I tried pairing both E.T. and Littlefoot to the leaf turtle females. So that's Yoda, Autumn, and Petrie. Of those pairings, two were successful. Littlefoot bred with Yoda and E.T. bred with Petrie. And several months later, we actually got some eggs. We got one egg from Petrie and a clutch of two eggs from Yoda. Unfortunately, nobody was able to breed with Autumn, and that's because she just will not let them do anything with her. I mean, seriously? Here, have a look and see how she reacts. She's not interested. So here, let me show you. We'll put E.T. in with Autumn. And normally, leaf turtles are pretty intense about breeding right away. Um, the male instantly shows interest. But look at Autumn. Does that look like a turtle that wants to breed to you? No, she is not down. She's like, no thank you. I do not want to breed with you. So we'll try again another year. But yeah, she is clearly not down to breed. Okay, okay, okay. You're good. Like this turtle is crazy. She is scary. Not interested. That's okay, buddy. Maybe another time. So here's where things get weird with the eggs. Like I said, Yoda here laid a clutch of two eggs on August 25th. Unfortunately, as good as they did look, they no longer appear to be as good. I've candled them, not seeing a whole lot going on in them. They didn't really develop the white band we were hoping to see either. I think this far along, they should have developed more. Because leaf turtles can hatch in like 70 days of incubation, which is pretty crazy. Uh, if you think about it, like a leopard gecko or a crested gecko takes longer than that on average. But alas, I'm going to incubate them until there's nothing left. Then little Petrie here, she laid an egg too. Really got moldy. However, I threw it in an isopod bin thinking, okay, cool, my... Porcilio lavis, wild type, can uh, eat it if they want. But all they did, friends, was clean the egg off. And now there's no mold on it. And it actually kind of candles red. So this is very bizarre. I'll uh, 
you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but we're gonna just let it do its thing here. I didn't really think it's a good egg, but I'm just leaving it in here because I don't know what's up. It's It looks pretty good now. Uh, I just wanna see, you know, give it a chance. They're not bothering it whatsoever, which in my past experience has always meant that it's a good egg. I feel like isopods just never touch good eggs. Uh, not the same with like superworms or anything like that, but... So we're gonna leave it here and hope for the best, cross our fingers, cause that would be so cool if we got one leaf turtle for the season, one one baby. But you know what? Getting any eggs so far is already a step in the right direction. I'm so glad we did. And now that we have three males for breeding, we can increase our chances even more. Well, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this Geomida Spengleri black-breasted leaf turtle update video and uh, setup for this beautiful or handsome new turtle we got, a lovely male. This guy is gorgeous. I'm so thrilled to have him in the pet family and I'm looking forward to giving you more updates. Again, there probably won't be very many of them, maybe a silkworm feeding video or two, and then these guys are going away. They'll naturally just want to hide and sleep for a better part of most of the winter. And then you'll see them come out again in spring and we can try our luck at breeding with three unique males and three unique females. If you want to see more videos pertaining to my experience keeping Geomida Spengleri, please consider checking out the link above here. Otherwise, can't wait to see you all next week for an upcoming video. Again. I'm still working on the tree monitor build. I'm really excited. That's gonna be coming out soon and I can't wait for you all to see it. So stick around, hang in there. It's coming. It's a big project, a big video. I'm so, so excited to finally bring it to fruition for the animals and for you. Bye guys.